Cubs. Um, let's just get more to that. Uh, what was your assessment of, of how that played out for you guys? Yeah, um, you know, mixed. I think it's it's disappointing that we went out in in four. I don't think anybody here likes being swept, uh, but still um, liked a lot of the things that we did within that series. Uh, obviously, there's some room for improvement uh, in the stuff. Liked what our young guys did. Um, a lot of guys took it to the next level in my mind. So it's exciting to see them progress and play at a high level in a high pressure situation against a good team. So. Uh, a lot of positives, and from my perspective, to take out of it. Uh, TJ, uh, when we spoke to him a couple hours ago, <laughs> kind of left things up in the air with regards to next year. How do you kind of uh, process what, what Yeah, same way. I met with him, and, you know, he has, I mean, it's been impressive to watch, or not impressive, but it, uh, I guess a lot of respect for what he did here to get to 1,000 games, to get to 300 goals to help us push in the playoffs, to finish up the year. I thought he played well at the end. Um, to go through what he did physically uh, was it, um, impressive to watch. Yeah. And I don't know how long you want to keep doing that, but uh, well, he'll take some time here and, and see where he's at physically, solution, possible solutions for that, and see how it works out. Would you have a, like I said, would, will you <coughs> Internally, is he seeking outside voice? I imagine you guys are pretty talked to have Yeah, I mean, I think he's, we've gone down the road yeah. with a few guys, yeah. specialists, so I think everybody's got relationships here, our staff and doctors that that are specialized in that area. Do you kind of need to know at some point, because I, I feel like we went this with, with Backstrom asking about that, and you didn't know, and that kind of hurt a little bit. I mean, I, it's really early in the process. Do you, yeah. Do you want to put a date on it at some point? I'm not going to put a date on what he wants to do. I, yeah. mean, I told him we'll support him in whatever he wants. Yeah. Um, seek solutions. Um, you know, if he determines that at some point he feels good, he wants to come back to play. Let's go that way. And if he doesn't, we'll work it out that way too. Culture-wise, I mean, we don't know what he's going to do, but culture-wise, what did he do for this organization? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a driver of our team. You know, I think he. He brings energy, he brings compete, he brings life, energy. I mean, he's he's a key part of what we've always accomplished here. Yeah. When you look at this season, sorry, Go ahead. Go ahead. when you look at this season, you wanted to get back in the playoffs, and you did. And you know you didn't like the end. Did this team squeeze pretty much everything out? I mean, they're doing the injury one year now, but do you feel like you squeezed pretty much uh, everything out of this team? Could, could yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, we started the year with uh, – a significantly different lineup, you know. I mean, we were lined up um, Guzzi, Backy, uh, you know, McMichael, Dowd, Strom. So we had five guys at center, and we ended up, you know, <laughs> in a different <laughs> spot. <laughs> you know, I think it's it, it evolved into something, I don't know, that we could have anticipated with what went on. Um, but in the end, I think I like the opportunity gave young guys, and they took advantage of it. So I think it worked out for us. Um, Charlie Lindgren only has a year left on his contract. Have you started even talking to his representative about an extension? I guess he can sign one soon as July 1st. Not yet, yeah. I mean, we'll, I think we'll go into the year. We'll talk to him. I mean, obviously, we're happy with his performance, and he's a big part of um, how we played down the stretch and in the playoffs. So it's, uh, we have time to work that out. We've had initial conversations. I think we've both communicated. We'll wait till the end of the season and then go from there. Um, Patrick Ray and Albany Bell are your only notable uh, UFAs. Are they? Is there a way possible to come back? Or um, well, I'll, I'll meet with coaches here. We'll go through lineups and what we think we need, and then we'll make decisions before July 1st on that. Defensive foundation was, was clearly laid this year. Where, where does the offense get made up? Where did the goals come from? Um, I think in some internally, I hope. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Lappy takes the next step. I hope Pro starts scoring more. Uh, McMichael, I mean, he, he, he improved this year. I think he'll improve next year. Um, you know, OV will get 42. 
<laughs> we got in Pennsylvania for 42, I think it is. Is it 42? Last day of the season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we should, no, we should be good. No, I think, uh, you know, we're going to look outside too. I mean, I think trades and free agency, I think we, you know, uh, we, we need to add something in that area. You know, we need to get a little more skill, a little more goals. Uh, we can find a way to do that. I think both ways, externally and internally, we need to improve with some of our young guys. It's been, it's been limited in past years, the ability to go outside because of salary cap, et cetera. Is that quote unquote easier? Or are you set up to, to do that? I think we have more flexibility uh, going forward here. I mean, we'll see what the market is. Uh, you know, salary cap will go up a little bit, so it'll give teams a little more room. Um, you know, we've acquired some draft capital. Uh, I would anticipate we're going to have some room uh, to use that. So we'll see what it brings. Spencer, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you do you think you're going to have clarity on net at some point this this offseason? Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Spencer talked about the need for more speed as well. How do you guys like to address that? Um, I guess. <laughs> I think the young guys provided speed. I think, you know, we're transitioning from an older team to a younger team, and I think it naturally happens. All our young guys uh, are our fastest players every night. So as we transition, I think we'll get faster. What do the young guys and Mikey Lapierre have to do to take that next step? I think it's just growth. I think it's, you know, playing at a high level, um, physically maturing, uh, adding to your game. Finding ways to uh, score goals, finding ways to operate in a tight game, and I think that four games we just played was uh, a huge part of that. You know, it's uh, New York played a physical style; they put a lot of pressure on guys, and, and you know, th I think it's a great learning for them to see, you know, hey, this is a strong game; it's a man's game. I need to get stronger, or I need to get quicker, or I need. They can feel it out there. Um, the level that game was at, and they feel where they're at, I think. And so it's up to them individually. We'll help them out, but they'll improve in all the areas. Matt, how do you see the goal setting situation going into, next, going into the offseason and into next season? Um, you know, I think uh, season kind of got away from Kemp's a little bit. I think he's a good goalie. I think if you look, he's been a consistent, good goalie for a long, long time. Um, I think. You know, the season, part of, partly because we struggled in certain areas at certain times, and it got away from him a little bit. You know, performance probably wasn't at his standard that he would like to be at. And then, you know, Chuck kind of played really well, so it, it kind of went away from him with that. And I think the coaches, you know, or the team, you know, we were under pressure to win every night, so they went with Chucky, and, and it you know, the longer that time goes on, I think it's harder for Kemp's to get back in the rotation and compete for a spot back. So it, the season got away from him. I, I would anticipate that, you know, given his track record of consistency, that he would come back and have a good year next year. You right. kind of joked about it, but OB 42 goals obviously breaks the record. But what you saw from OB outside this playoff series, the last, you know, the all for really gone, is that, you think that's what you can expect from the next year? And well, I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's fair to, to, he's 38 years old, you know, I, I, I can't, we can't come in and say he's got to carry us or he's got to get 50 goals or whatever. I was joking about the 42. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you could take me serious, Tom. <laughs> I guess what do you expect from OB, is, is more of what you saw in the last 36 games than the first whatever it was for you. Yeah, I think you're going to get both. Yeah. I, would, I would expect both. I think he's going to have times where he's, he's, he's you look like he still has it and, um, and he's playing well and he's moving well and he's scoring and there's going to be lulls in his game. I mean, the schedule is going to, you know, grind on a 38-year-old. We're traveling a lot, playing every second night, two and threes. Um, it's, it's, it's hard for older players to, to play at a high level of consistency. It's just not set up for that physically and mentally. So so I guess you obviously want to get better for in other areas just in general, but to help him, is that also part of it too, to take some of the pressure off him and maybe help him be more productive? Yeah, I think, 
you know, I think it's there's a lot of pressure on him. I mean, he's expected to carry us offensively at 38 is probably not fair. Um, but, you know, we lost a couple offensive players. We've got young guys coming in, so that's just the circumstance we're in. And we're going to look to, you know, get some help here too, uh, if we can find it. Brian, do you, you, you're kind of like a year when you missed the playoffs, another year where you got in on the last night and were swept out. Do you think roster-wise and cap-wise and trade-wise, you're in position to create a situation that next year you're adding at the deadline, like like you're you're better positioned and not playing playoff games for three straight months? Or is that not reasonable? I, I would anticipate if, if we could do something, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know that we looked out of place in the playoffs. I, I get the whole goal differential thing. Um, I mean, if we could add a player or two, I think, I don't know that we're top eight. Mm -hmm. You can be in that next group, though. You know, I think we're in that group already where there's, you know, there's a bunch of teams that didn't make the playoffs, 16 teams, and there's going to be through more here. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a level of play that the top eight to ten teams are at. I think we can get close to that. That would be our goal. How many, um, you know, speed and scoring, are we talking like maybe two top six forwards? Like, like, like what's, your, what's your target? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I want to leave room for our guys to grow. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I want to get with the coaching staff and, and, and target a couple areas that I think we, I think, or hopefully they think we need. Well, speaking of your coaching staff, um, the head coach said you guys need more size on the back end. Do you, you agree there? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I thought Big Al had a really good playoff. Uh, he's he's got good size. I mean, I, I think last year we weren't sure when we added Edmondson. Uh, you know, I, I liked what uh, Alexiev did at the end. I thought he played physical. I thought he was real competitive, moved the puck well. Um, I think he took it to another level right at the end of the year, the playoffs especially. How, how does TJ's decision to play affect your kind of roster construction this summer in terms of whether you either have this LTI space to use or have him? Have well, I mean, he's a big part of our team. He's a top six guy, he, you know, 5.75, I think the number is. Um, you have him or you go out and find a guy. I know Barry asked you about action just to follow up. And, um, it's just status quo with him. Do you yeah. just expect him to remain LTI, not, not on the team that, That's what I would anticipate. Mac, what's your hope with Hendricks going to Hershey and looking up last year and did so well this year? What are you hoping to see from him now that he's... Uh, I would like to see offense down there. Um, I it appeared to me that he got a little more confident here as we went on. Uh, I mean, a great goal, obviously, the other night. Um, I think going down there um, with some confidence, uh, knowing that he could do it at this level, I would like, hopefully, like to see him, you know, um, score some goals, make some great plays, and uh, help that team in the playoffs. One of the <coughs> other core guys that we haven't talked about is Carlson, who's basically playing a half an hour a night during the can he still do it? Can he still be that that anchor man? I think he can. I think he did it this year. I, I think, you know, I think it was in a unique situation, and that you know we had two top four guys out for an extended period of time, and he filled in for him. Uh, you know, that's I don't think we want him playing that much. You know, um, I think we could take a little of that penalty kill time away from him too, so we could, you know, a more normal workload. Yeah. I think would benefit him going forward. Um, the uh, potential use of a buyout, do you, do you think that, that might be something you guys would use this, this year? I don't think so. I don't see it happening. Um, Ethan Bear, is there anything you can share with us? About uh, he just got out of the program. He just oh, got okay. released for the program, yeah. So um, hopefully we'll see him here or I'll meet with him. I think he met with Carbs today oh, okay. or so tomorrow. He's back, yeah, he's yeah. back in town. He okay. just got back in town today. Good. What have you learned about the, the program? Obviously, there, there, there's a certain level they can't tell you kind of why. What, what have you learned about kind of players being able to use, to use that program? Including, I guess. I mean, I, I don't. It's we don't get much information on it. Yeah. Um, I think the 
parameters of the program or confidential, uh, how they go in are confidential and how they come out are confidential. Um, any information I get is from talking to the individuals, um, and that's about it. Um, <laughs> Carp Car had, had a great quote. He said, uh, "He said I feel like I lost a few years off my life. And instead of I had the air, I would have turned a little more gray." But, but what was this roller coaster of a season like for you personally? I just you know, lives and dies with every minute, with every ship. Yeah, I mean, it was you know, like I, I talked earlier, it was it was where we started and where we finished. You couldn't anticipate any of that, you know. Yeah. So and it, and then you're in the playoffs and you're playing New York in New York. I mean, it was it was you know a pretty wild run. Um, fun. It was a lot of fun to see the compete down the stretch. I mean, that was the most the best part of the season for me. Uh, seeing the effort everybody put into getting into the playoffs. Yeah. I think that was huge for our organization. You, you obviously had the culture established here by guys who have won the cup, but. Um, to get that compete over that last couple months, the coach must have been, they could have blown off the coach a long time ago because he's never done it, whatever. It, you must have seen something in Spencer over there. Yeah, I mean, he's he brought the intensity. Um, he turned it up um, on a nightly basis. So I think that's part of, you know, how, how he's feeling that uh, our playoffs started a while ago. The intensity, the compete, you know, and then, you know, you lose a game and it's so disappointing um, for whatever reason. And I think there's a lot of energy that goes out and is put into that to get us back to the next level, the next night. Right. You know, you're continually uh, addressing that. And our schedule, I think, down the, down the stretch was every second night for five, six back weeks. Back on the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. I mean, it's, it was a grind. Um, and it just set up that way. We had an easy schedule at the beginning, a lot of days off, mm -hmm. and then at the end we paid the price. So, and then we got through it. And I think it, it's intense, it's competitive, and it's tiring. Well, Charlie told us that he turned down an invitation from uh, the U.S. for World Championships. Um, anybody from your team going to the World Championships? I think I heard Marty's going. Okay. Uh, that's the only one so far. What do you think of Spencer, Spencer's job and the, the adjustments he made throughout the season to kind of injuries and, and kind of style of play and kind of navigating his first season as an NHL coach? Yeah, I thought he was excellent. I mean, he's a good young coach. He has a good mind for the game. Um, brings energy every day. Um, does a good job with, you know, uh, addressing issues that come up during the year with players. Constantly trying to make players better. Uh, I think he has a really good skill set. I think... That's his first year. I think he's, you know, he's only going to get better from here on out. Happy with the staff in general? Uh, as early as yeah, I think, um, you know, I think one thing we're going to, you know, we have to take a look at our specialty teams, both, um, you know, uh, find some answers, whether it's personnel or try and make some improvements there. Specialty, uh, face-offs. When Pekka was here during COVID, you guys made a big improvement. And he went to the Rangers and we just saw what he did with the check. I mean, is, is that a thing that's going to become a, like a specialty job, like someone who works with Yeah, I think, I mean, we've always tried to look for a guy that can yeah. come in and do that. Um, and we continue to. It's hard to find a guy that has that skill set. Uh, 